Hello, everyone. Nice to Hello. see you all. Thanks so much for coming. And some familiar faces here and some folks I've never met before. Lovely. And um, let's see, I've got a few more folks registered than are in here right now. So they'll probably continue to come in for a little while. Mitch, I didn't see you beforehand. Sometimes it doesn't show me everyone, but I don't know if you were there or not. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make you co, oops, let's see. Oh, the, the names are moving around on me, huh? Which happens, make you co-host. Um, yeah, great, lovely. Well, nice to see all of your faces. And hi, Joanne, it's been a while. Nice to see you. Um, and Jill and Elle is joining us from the Netherlands, wonderful. And we have another person who will probably be joining from the Netherlands too, I believe, um, on this call, just because the time for our first call on, uh, the, on Monday, so the 8th, is in the middle of the night for you guys. So we have some folks who are on this call who are already in the class, and then some folks who are, well, presumably, well, actually, why don't I not assume where you're coming from and why? And you can just raise your hand to let me know. And actually some of you, um, I can't, I don't see video for. So if you are considering being in the class but have not yet registered, go ahead and raise your hand and let me know that. A couple of you, great. Megan and I saw an email, and Noah, excellent. Um, I saw an email from you that I have not yet responded to but I, I have that and will do. And are the others of you in the class? Okay, great. Wonderful, Elle, I know you are, and Melanie, yes, excellent. And Jill, are you registered for the class? Oh, you're, you're muted still. Oh. <laughs> there we go. I would love to be in this class because I know that I would love everything you have to say, but I have been terrible at sewing uh, for ever since seventh grade. So I just can't <laughs> see myself, but, uh, but sitting at your feet is an honor. Uh, yeah. but you know, I do want to hear what you say and you can probably convince me to do anything, <laughs> but, uh, right. right. Well, I'll, I'll try to use those powers <laughs> only for good. <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to build my wilderness shelter. So and I haven't put the first tripod in place yet, but. Well, I'm that's so awesome. I, I mean, I'm, open I'm glad that you want to. So yeah, yeah. Exactly. excellent, great. Well, um, so we'll see, there might be more people filtering into the call as we go, or or this might be the whole group. Um, usually it's like within the first five to 10 minutes, we still have people kind of filtering in. But if we have just this many on the call, that's nice because it's a small enough group that hopefully we can hear from every, everyone, which is always, is always my favorite. I like it when lots of people are able, oh, let's see. Um, I see Brosnan that your, your audio isn't working. I have you on mute from my end. So it's possible that that's why and you just need to unmute yourself um, or it's possible that just it's a technical thing because that totally happens too. Um, so yeah, I love it when more people come to the calls but I also particularly, oh, here's Madeline also from, I'm not sure if it's Netherlands or, um, or Germany where she's coming from but, um, but I have to start my senses, sentences and over. I prefer the more intimate calls, even though I love it when more people want to join me. So I'm always kind of torn about more or less people on these calls. It's nice when we can all see, you know, a larger thumbnail of each other's faces and actually get around to hear from everyone. So welcome, Madeline. Nice that you joined us. Um, so what I'm going to do, because we have some folks who are thinking about it and some folks who are already in the class, I'm just going to kind of give an overview of the way the class works and the things that we're going to cover. Ever, um, which hopefully will be helpful for all of you to hear, and then um, and then open it up to questions. And you can either um, I saw that Joanne, but I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> You're unmuting yourself. I'll give you a moment here. I'm just interested also to know if the book has been published on buckskin sewing. Oh yeah, great question. No, I'm still working on it. This month, the two things on my list are the working on the buckskin book and getting it set up and, and revising it. Um, and 
running the class. So I am working with an editor right now, a man named JC, who um, just finished his doctoral thesis in writing and has worked as both a copy editor and a developmental editor. So he's doing both of those for me. So helping me with the larger concepts and how to break the book from one huge volume into two more successfully. And then also the, the you know, polishing, the spit shining of it and getting it ready for publishing. So yeah, so super exciting. Um, great question. Uh, so yeah, does that sound good to everyone for me to give an overview and kind of explain how it works both logistically and the material and then I uh, will open it up to questions and hear from some of you. So yeah, so so glad that you're excited about the class, whether you're in it or whether you're just thinking about it. So. I have been traveling to gatherings all over the Western US and occasionally in the East Coast as well, teaching ancestral skills, a variety of different skills, but one of the ones that has been a big focus for me for many decades now is teaching buckskin sewing, hide tanning and also buckskin sewing. Um, and, you know, I named my business Buckskin Revolution because buckskin is not just near and dear to my heart and an amazing material to work with, but also because I feel like it's really become kind of a, a visual symbol of this movement, the modern ancestral skills movement, a movement back to having more interaction with the things that we use in our daily lives. So part of what I'm passionate about sharing with the world is skills that we use to, to inform our daily lives, as opposed to just when we're out on a wilderness adventure for you know a week, a year, or whatever amount of time that might be. And clothing is something that most of us, depending on our climate and our preferences, wear every, every day, right? So buckskin is a way that we can anchor that energy of the wild in our daily lives in a way that not only you know, brings that in, but is this very tactile and visual and a way that really informs a lot of our senses because buckskin smells like wood smoke and we can feel it on our skin and we can see it. So I feel like it, it's a symbol of, of a lot of the ancestral skills and land-based living skills, as well as being really practical. And I call my, my business and my book Buckskin Revolution because I really feel like having a commitment to these skills and bringing them more into our lives, even when as modern humans, we have a lot of options not to, is an important and a revolutionary act. And so Buckskin Revolution is about a re-evolution of buckskin into the modern era and our modern lives in a way that makes sense for us, which looks a little different than how our ancient forebears were probably wearing their buckskin. And also just the revolution of choosing to be more connected to the things which we require for our life, even in this modern era. So uh, the Buckskin course, I originally envisioned as an online version of the class that I've been teaching at gatherings around the country for decades now, which is basically a full day class walking you through making a small project that incorporates a lot of the different skills that you would use for larger projects. So rather than diving into you know, a complex garment the first time you ever pick up an awl and buckskin, we're making a small thing that you can finish in a day that gives you a bunch of the basic fundamentals and gets you actually using your hands. Um, so, so it gives people a sense of confidence and both the knowledge and the skills to tackle those larger projects feeling less intimidated about them. Originally, that was my intent for this course. And it, the, the class that I offered as part of my fall gathering, which many of the faces here participated in my fall gathering, um, was mostly just that sampler bag project. But it's me, and I really love sharing a lot of knowledge with people. Anytime I go into classes, I always give more information than folks can take in. So. As such, I've expanded the class. So now it's the how to project is just one of four modules. So the first module is taking you through the basic building blocks of, you know, what is buckskin? What makes it so special? I have a brief introduction to the process, not instructions, but just like, here's how to understand how buckskin is made. So you get why it's different than other leathers and then fundamentals to working with it, tools, you know, what to look for in an awl, how to cut the best thong and why I like thong versus needle and thread. And then what I call my cardinal rules of buckskin sewing, which are seven principles, which if you forget everything else that you hear in the class, if you remember these seven things, then it'll, it'll give you enough to move forward successfully with buckskin sewing. So that's module one. 
module two is walking you step by step through that hands on project, which I actually don't have an example of right here, but it's all over the course website and a lot of my social media, this small project that we make throughout the course of the class. And you don't have to have buckskin. You don't have to follow along and make that. But it is really nice to help you learn if you have access to materials. And so when you sign up for the class, you get an email that gives you a resource list and, and gives you contact info for three different sources of buckskin hides. So between all of those, you should be able to find your way to some brain tan buckskin. Um, and then also early on, I had a bunch of kits for folks to purchase um, so that they had pre-cut pieces to make the pack bag that we're doing in the class, but those sold out pretty quick. Um, so I am planning to do another batch of them. So at some point in the class, it's not going to be until, you know, the class is already launched because I've got a lot to do still to get it launched. But I will be trying to get those available again. So there'll be a next batch where folks can order that to do the hands-on project. Uh, module three is all focused on garments. So it's me talking about how to apply some of those basic skills specifically to garments. And then it's going to be a tour through my buckskin wardrobe. So talking about all, a bunch of the different things that I have made and wear out of buckskin. And some of these things are as much as 18 years old. So they're my learning projects. And I walk you through like, here's what I did wrong in this project and what I learned through wearing it over the years and how I do it differently now. And then it's also, which is going to be fun, I've also been editing um, footage that I took two years ago when I made a pair of shorts for my friend Matt Graham, who a lot of folks have heard of because he's been on a lot of different survival television shows. Um, and he's an amazing, an amazing skilled um, everything. I don't really like the term survivalist. I try to avoid it. But he's an amazing man who took these shorts on a month long Stone Age survival trip that was televised in Europe. Um, and, uh, and his, he's been wearing the shorts ever since. So it shows the process of going from the pattern and design phase through, um, through laying out and cutting the shorts. And I'm still working on editing the shots of me making them. So hopefully that'll be all together. Um, it might, I might have to put a couple of the classes out later if I don't have them finished editing by, by Monday. Um, and then finally, the fourth module is how to wash and care for your buckskin clothes. And then there's a slideshow of tons of different photos that I've taken of buckskin clothing throughout the last 15 years, traveling around to events where there's a lot of people in buckskin. So kind of ideas to take and run with and see the breadth of what people have done with buckskin. So my hope is that it's super comprehensive and that there's something for everyone of every skill level, both people who like, as Jill said, are intimidated about sewing and feel like they could never get the hang of sewing because buckskin is really different than sewing with other materials. So some people who don't like sewing with, with needle and thread or with cloth find that actually they love sewing with buckskin and vice versa. And I always tell people that having some experience sewing with needle and thread actually can be more of a handicap than a help when you're working with buckskin because you're going to tend to want to apply the things you've learned from working with cloth to buckskin and it doesn't translate very well. A lot of the common mistakes I see in people working with buckskin is because they're applying what they know from sewing to buckskin and it just doesn't work that way. It's a very different material. It's a very different skill set. So you don't have to have experience and you might be better off with less experience because you're going to be less inclined to make mistakes if you just are starting from ground zero. Um, so that's kind of what the course covers. And then in terms of how it works, the classes are all pre-recorded. So they're all videos that I've done throughout time. So some of the some of these are from as long ago as 2018. Uh, me that's when I started kind of the idea of a YouTube channel and started recording some of my classes to things that I recorded just a couple of weeks ago specifically for this class and everywhere in between. So the classes are pre-recorded and follow you, you know, through all of those modules and you can watch those anytime and you'll have access to those forever when you sign up for the class, maybe not forever because it'll be limited by my lifetime um, and the internet's lifetime and who knows, but, um, but there's, no, there's no limit on these classes. You have access to them you know, into the future from, from when you sign up. What is more time limited is our Zoom calls. So the classes 
you get all of the information in the pre-recorded classes, but then they're supported by a weekly Zoom call, which are more interactive and a chance for you to share what you've done and ask me questions and for us to talk about the subjects of the modules. So the way I have it designed is so that it's most digestible within four weeks. So doing one of the modules per week. And so the Zoom calls are gonna be kind of tailored towards that and focus on one of the modules per call but you can watch them all you know in a marathon from the moment the class starts or you can you know wait and watch them over the course of the next many years it's up to you it's just that if you watch them more in line with that four week schedule then then you'll be better able to make use of those zoom calls if that makes sense um, additionally, you have access and all of you who have signed up so far should have already received an invite. We've only had less than half of people sign up so far, but there's a, there's a whole platform, which is an online community platform, and some of the folks in the fall gathering will know about this, where you can go on any time, night or day, and you can post pictures, you can read other folks' posts, you can introduce yourselves and share what you've learned about projects, you can discuss the different classes. So that is, again, supporting the class content. And both the Zoom calls and the access to the Buckskin Revolution Circle are for the four weeks that is the official class period. So you, you won't have access to those on into the future, but you will to the classes. Um, and then additionally, there's a little bit of written material. So there's step-by-step -step instructions written to that, that sewing project as well and then the cardinal rules are in there and there's some diagrams about stitches and this and that so a gajillion different ways to learn from the videos and the you know live interaction and the not live but community interaction and reading so again the hope is that you would have to work hard not to learn a lot from this class even if you're experienced or have no idea where to start um so that was kind of a lot to digest. And I see that some things have come through in the, oh, the host can unmute participants. I'm not sure that I can. I can invite people to unmute, but I can't actually um, unmute them myself. I think it has to be a, a community effort. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the chat the code that will give you a 15% off discount to the class. It's very easy to remember. I just made Feb 15, the code, because the class starts in February and it's a 15% off discount. So I'm just gonna share that in the chat. Coupon. Also, you're gonna be getting an email after this call sending you the code as well. So if you don't wanna write it down now, you don't have to. Okay, and then I'll also post the link to the registration page for the course itself because that is sometimes helpful to have right in front of you. And there's also a link um, on the homepage of my website and it's actually quite easy to find if you Google it, uh, just Buckskin Sewing 101, Buckskin Revolution ought to take you there. So there are, oops, it just did it a second time, okay. All right. Well, I have been talking kind of a while, so I want to go ahead and open it up to questions and comments. Um, so you can either write a question in the chat or you can raise your hand on your screen and Mitch or I will call on you, or you can um, raise your virtual hand, which is down on the bottom of your panel under reactions. If you click on the little smiley face with a plus over that says reactions, it gives you an option to raise your hand. So lots of different ways. Oh, Rick just joined us. Great, hi, Rick. Um, yeah. I also want particularly to give time to the folks who are going to be joining the class from Europe. So Elle and Madeline, and I'm not sure if there's someone else here as well, because the, um, right, yes, and and I forget how, I think you've maybe been on a call before and I forget how to pronounce your name. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so um, so I want to give extra preference to them because our standard Zoom calls for the class are in the middle of the night for them. So more of them are on this call as a way to get kind of the introduction and, and meeting folks that we'll be doing in the Monday Zoom calls. And hopefully all of you um, three have seen in the 
in the post, but I did go ahead and schedule an additional call on Tuesday, February 16th, specifically for you guys. Other people are welcome too, but I wanted to make sure that I had one um, that, that is not in the middle of the night for you. And I'll probably be scheduling another one too. I usually kind of wait and see how much attendance I get on those special calls because sometimes no one shows up for them and then it's silly to have scheduled them. <laughs> um, all right, great. And if and if there aren't any specific questions, we'll just kind of go around and do introductions and, and hear from folks. So, so is it Meek? You can, okay. Hi, hi, uh, it's, it's Meese actually. Meese. Um, but don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, I was thinking about the, the, the material that um, you were gonna send a link to three stores. Uh, but I would reckon that they were probably uh, in the States as well. And they're not, um, you don't go international on that part, probably. That's Is that true. correct? Yeah, and they're not, and just so you know, they're not stores. They're three individuals who are friends of mine who I know. Two, the first two, I kind of give them to you in order of my preference. Like one is a very dear friend of mine who I've spent a lot of time with and, and tanned hides next to him a lot. Another is Mel Beatty, who um, is an expert hide tanning, who's also a friend of mine, but does kind of more business. And then there's an actual store, which is also run by a friend of mine, but it's kind of a bigger operation. And those hides are not ones that he tans. He kind of farms out the tanning and I can't vouch for the quality because different people are tanning for him all the time. However, I do know of some folks, I believe in Wales, who tan hides and teach workshops, and I believe potentially um, do have some for sale. So I should reach out to those folks. That's something I haven't done yet because I didn't have my brain um, geared towards helping the, the Europeans, but, um, but that is an option and I'll look into that and potentially if, I, if that works out, post it on the, on the circle platform as well. So you can order from someone who isn't across an ocean. Right, because I think you were going to teach at Bika Beke as well. Uh, in the Netherlands, you were going to teach a course, right? Um, uh huh. Yep, and yeah. we're kind of, that's kind of just, you know, waiting to see. It was going to be last summer, and of course it got, it got canceled. So we have it tentatively scheduled for this coming summer, and it's just, you know, it's just a matter of whether the state of the world will allow for that by the time it happens, and which is still a question. Sure, yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You might have seen it, but there are a couple of questions in the chat. Do you want me to read them? Oh, great. Um, thank you. That would be helpful. Yeah. All right. So first, when will the weekly Zoom calls be scheduled? Great question. So they are scheduled for Monday evenings at 5 p.m. Pacific, because that's the one time that everyone in the U.S. hopefully should be um, you know, off of work if they have a standard schedule and where it's not too late on the East Coast. So that's kind of our standard time for a lot of these calls because most folks in North America should be able to make them and they're not a completely unreasonable time. But then, you know, there are people for who that time doesn't work. So then I try to throw in a couple extra sessions just to make sure that there are times that are doable. But starting this Monday, so just a few days now, um, Monday, 5 p.m. is our first one, and then the next three Mondays. So four four calls in total on that. Yeah, great question. And then there's a question. It's not exactly a question, but it's a note from Madeline saying that a text was sent to Jay, but he hasn't responded yet about a hide. And that raises the question in me of if Jay even has texting ability. <laughs> um, yes, he does. And I also just got an email for them, but also uh, I just spoke to Jay, um, or I spoke to his wife actually um, two days ago and they're, they're traveling, they're on a trip right now, they're going and camping with folks. They know that my class is about to start and that I've given, um, given their contact. And so they're, they're expecting and they actually, they're on a trip and they brought their hides with them because they were expecting to hear from my students, but they also you know have sporadic access. Um, they do text though, that is definitely a way that will work. Um, and I know we had corresponded that before and I did speak to them and I did get an email address to use for them as well um, after we spoke Madeline or wrote. Um, so, so I will post that. It's a good reminder because I haven't posted it yet. Um, but I'll, I, you know, I'll actually put it in the, in the um, chat now. So that is Mountain River Ocean School at 
believe this is correct. These are very dear friends of mine. So I'm just doing their email um, by memory. This is actually the email for Jay's wife, but I'm just gonna check my phone to make sure that I remembered it right. MRO school at iCloud.com. Yep, that's it. Okay, great. So she homeschools her boys and the name of the school is Mountain River Ocean School because they're always to be found one of those places. So it kind of, makes for kind of an interesting um, email address there, but I just put it in the chat. Um, so yeah, so probably I would say that um, the other folks who are a little bit more plugged in, the second and third references for hides, they might be a little bit more immediate just because Jay and Nastasha live off grid and travel a lot and are off hiking with their goats an awful lot. So they don't, they're not going to get back to you within, you know, within a few hours, most likely. Um, also, uh, you know, if we find that a lot of these sources are getting exhausted, there are other folks who I could contact to. I'm obviously in the hide tanning world, so I have a lot of connections with a lot of different hide tanners, but I wanted to, to send you to those folks who I'm most excited to support um, first, and then, and then we can expand more as needed. And Noah, I saw you had your hand up there. I'm gonna answer this one that I saw in the, in the chat first though, and then we'll get to you. So you're, you're in line here. I saw a question about a speedy stitcher and I'm really glad you asked that because I do not like speedy stitchers. I do not like any of the standard, um, the standard leather alls because if you look closely at a, at a speedy stitcher specifically, and for those of you who don't know, this is a particular tool that you can buy in a lot of outdoor stores and it has a needle with a hole in the end like a sewing machine does and then a spool of thread and the idea is that you poke through and then you thread your needle through and then you pull it out because you've got this needle with a hole in it. The issue with speedy stitchers and with all things with a triangular blade which glovers needles which are sold for working with leather leather also have is they are they're triangular and they're very sharp so they're actually slicing the fibers in your hide buckskin is made of this network of all of these long protein fibers and when you use a small round all to poke your holes, you're forcing those fibers apart and making space between them. And the hole actually kind of closes back up around your thong and it makes a nice tight secure hole that's not going to change much on you. When you use a speedy stitcher, you're you're slicing those fibers and then you have a large hole that's going to continue to stretch and get bigger and bigger over time. So your, your holes are gonna get sloppy, your seams are gonna get sloppy and they can potentially tear out as well. So you're really weakening your material. And um, yeah, so that's part of why I have a hole. And I don't know that I talked about the shape of the all honestly in the class because there are so many things to cover and talking about and all, but that's a good reminder that I should get in there and add an extra slide. But round awls are key. And in a lot of the leather industry, you see triangular awls. And this is because almost everyone else who works with leather is working with either chrome tanned or bark tanned leather, which is really different than buckskin. And it doesn't stretch and give and move in the same ways because the tanning process is used for those actually bond the fibers together and buckskin, they're not bound, which is part of the beauty of buckskin. It's really comfortable to wear and you can move in it and it breathes in ways that other leathers don't. But you need to know how it's different than those and work with it according to its nature, not according according to what everyone else in the leather sewing world or industry tells you you should do. So speedy stitchers, not good for buckskin. Um, Noah. Oh, yeah, you're about to go to oh. Noah, but really quickly before I forget, is there, will you be able to send the chat to people for whom it might not be easy to be writing these things down out of the chat during the call? Yes, absolutely. I'll save the chat afterwards and I can, um, and I'll send that along. So you're going to get an email with a link to watch this video and with the, with the coupon code. And I'll also put the chat in that email. Yeah. Great question. Um, okay. Thank you, Mitch. Sorry, on to Noah. Sorry, Noah. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to grab my tea real quick too. I always, always have to have my tea in my hand for these calls. <laughs> Great. Hi, Noah. Hello. Good to see you. Um, I'd like to participate as physically as possible, joining in and having my hands on the buckskin and the tools whilst it's happening. So I just wondered what 
I would need to gather to be able to participate as much as possible? Do I, do we learn to create an all? Do I need to get myself an all? I have this deer leg bone here and I was just thinking, is that something I can prepare beforehand? So what do I need to gather? And when do I need to gather it by? I think the date of this has slipped my mind. <laughs> Absolutely, great questions, yeah. So the course starts on February 8th. The, um, again, you have access to, which is two days from now, um, you have access to all of the classes from when it starts, unless I'm still struggling to finish the editing on a couple of them, but most of them will be there. Um, the talking about alls is in the first module, and then the hands-on project is the second module. So if you did it according to that four-week schedule, then it wouldn't be until um, February, what would that be, 13th? No, 15th, yeah. 15th, um, that you would need the all. Um, so I do have, when you register, you get a link with materials and there's a link to a particular all. I hand make alls that I think are much better than anything else there in the industry. And I did um, make those available to folks who signed up early and then I did sell out, but I am going to be making another batch just like with the buckskin. Um, so I will certainly try to get those on the sooner side, just so folks can, you know, have hands-on material to participate sooner. But if you're interested in making your own all, what you could do is follow one of those links to see the all that I recommend. Like if, you know, if you need to buy an industry all, this is the best, the best one that I would recommend. And you could try to make your deer bone all in similar proportions to that. So, and that you get as soon as you register. So you can start working on it right away. But yeah, it's a great question. And I totally encourage hands-on participation. One tends to learn a lot more that way. Um, and yeah, buckskin is a harder material to lay your hands on and good quality buckskin tools. You know, as I said, most of them are made, most leather tools are made for other types of leathers and I don't find very good. Um, but I do go in depth into alls and what to look for in a good all and what makes a more usable versus a less usable all. So we cover all of that in, in the course in the first two weeks. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, would I, if I'm joining the course, be able to talk to you about tanning related things which aren't necessarily sewing? For instance, I've been on a bit of a journey with foraging from carcasses the last year and I found a, a fox carcass in my path as I was walking across the open common land by my house and I tried to tan it with bark tanning but I don't know quite what I'm doing and I've got to a certain stage with it. I wondered whether because you're focusing on the talking to larger groups and on teaching the sewing whether you'd have the time and energy to connect on those sort of things as well kind of looking to just make a connection really sure yeah that's a great question it's, I'm glad you brought that up because that definitely happens on these calls where I get questions about other things to be perfectly honest this will be the first time I've done one of my online courses with uh, such a narrow focus thus far I've been doing gatherings and we always cover hide tanning in some different degree in the gatherings um, so the answer is that it really depends on how much participation we get in the Zoom calls and how much material there, there is to cover. I'm guessing that there won't be time for, for, you know, that's obviously a related subject, but not what this course is focused on. But when you sign up and you get access to that community platform, you get access not just to everybody in this class, but you get access to my larger Buckskin Revolution community circle. And there's a specific hide tanning group on that that does Zoom calls every two to three weeks. And you're welcome to join those and, and plug into that. And so I'm, you know, that's a place where people ask me questions about skill stuff. And then there's also monthly Zoom calls for that group that can be on whatever subject. So I do, you know, have ways to make myself available for questions about things off topic. It's just not necessarily within the platform of this class, but you get access to the larger, you know, it's kind of like you get a, a brief, you know, visit to the larger community through signing up for this class. And then there's an option right now that community isn't open to the public. It's just people who 
are in a specific class with me, but starting in March, it'll be open just on a membership basis. So you could not sign up for a class and sign up for the membership in the community and then have access to that high training group and the calls and, and all that. So I'm trying to make these skills as accessible as possible, you know, to as many people as possible. And I also have to be kind of careful with what I offer because there's like hundreds of people reaching out to me with skills questions about every subject under the sun all the time and I can't possibly attend to all of them. So trying to be creative and get community engagement so that it's a community of people supporting one another in these skills and not all on me because it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. That was really clear. Thank Great. you very much. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. And it looks like that um, probably attends to that question from Laurel too about where I cover tanning. So again, there's a brief intro to hide tanning in this course so that you understand the process in order to better inform your buckskin sewing. But this, this isn't a course on buckskin tanning. Um, I have those courses, they're in the gatherings thus far, and I will eventually be editing those as standalone courses just on hide tanning too. But um, but yeah, that isn't that isn't the focus of this. It comes up, and again, if we have our Zoom calls and everyone has asked every question about buckskin sewing and we have extra time, that would be a time we could talk about tanning. But I don't really foresee that because the subject of buckskin sewing is pretty broad and there's a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question as well, Laurel? Okay, good. <laughs> Monia, are you also still offering your, um, is it Sage FM uh, time, private time with people? I am, yeah. These days I've, I've been busy enough that, um, that it's, it's a little bit harder to get an appointment with me and I'm not doing them for February because February is designated just working on my books and running this course and not taking on any extra projects. So I am still available. And, and what Mitch is referring to is I offer um, a one-on-one -on -one video mentoring too. So like Zoom, only it's through this other platform, Sage. And sometimes I consider just doing it on my own instead of through Sage. Sage is convenient because it's by the minute and they keep track of all of that. So it's less logistics for me, but it makes it a little bit more expensive for others and a little less, you know, less back to me because they take a cut. That said, that is something that I've offered. So if you have specific questions like Noah for you, if you wanted my step-by-step, -step, you know, in-person mentoring or, you know, live, but not in-person mentoring on the Fox, that would be another option is to reach out to me in those ways, but not during February. because February is writing retreat month and buckskin sewing. <laughs> and one other thing I wanted to check with you about, with regard to the community and the buckskin, buckskin group on the community, mm -hmm. you mentioned the um, every two weeks phone call, Zoom calls. And I was thinking that you probably weren't on those calls, but the way you spoke of it just now, it sounded like you might be going to the buckskin calls, but I wanted to make sure that was clear one way or the other. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for catching that. Thus far, I've not been on those Zoom calls that are, so in the buckskin revolution community, um, Let's clarify. So there will be a Zoom call that's the whole group once a month that I am a part of. And then there are these smaller focus groups that do Zoom calls on their own and they you know, decide on the schedule together and then have them. And it's been somewhere between every two to four weeks, it seems for those small groups. Those small group calls I'm not attending. Occasionally I might, I'd like my goal is to pop into them. Thus far I've been so busy putting this class together that I haven't made it to jumping into those. But yeah, those are kind of two separate things, the larger community Zoom calls. And then, and those haven't happened because the community isn't um, open to the public yet, but that's what the phase will be entering in March. And then the smaller group that I'm less likely to be at, but I might be, but it's groups of people who are interested in the same subjects and have been doing projects on them. And there are a lot of experts in those groups and there are a lot of beginners and any given call, it's kind of a crapshoot who will be on that. Actually, um, with our small group, I'm in one of the small groups every day. Um, it's actually pretty reliable who's on the call. Um, some people might come and go, but in general, there's a core group that meets reliably. Um, so it won't be totally random, probably. Um, you'll probably be with the same core group and then occasionally people coming and going a little bit um, in relation to the core group. 
Great, thank you. Yeah, you you are far more of an expert on how those calls have been going than I, so that's great. I get a little email and I see people signing on to the calls, but um, but um, yeah, but I haven't been in them yet, so that's great. Um, I see a question from Suzanne about, um, hi, Simon, lovely to see you, glad to have you join us. This is a friend of mine in real life. <laughs> which is fun. A lot of you are, are friends virtually thus far. Um, so Suzanne, uh, any issues with, with being left-handed? And that is a great question. Um, nothing with the awls and the general sewing techniques. The, the only thing is I know that scissors often don't work as well um, if you're if you're left-handed and using right-handed scissors. And I, being right-handed, um, I don't actually have have experience with finding left-handed scissors for folks. So um, yeah, it's a good thing. It'd be good for me to look into, but I don't have specifics to recommend um, on the material list at this point. There, I'm sure that there are companies out there that make good sewing scissors. And I would say, um, okay, she says you can find them on Amazon. So I would look towards standard sewing scissors that are made for left-handed people just because buckskin and leather scissors are so specialized that there's probably just a lesser chance of getting, of getting you know, different tools in the, in the more niche markets. So that's what I would say. And I don't have uh, specific recommendations around scissors in the materials list because it's much more general. It's, it's pretty easy to find. Any scissors that work all right for sewing are okay with buckskin. They're not my favorite. I have some, some things that I look for and prefer in scissors for buckskin, which is micro serrations so that they kind of grip your buckskin so you can get very precise cuts. Buckskin is so much thicker than fabric that it's um, it can be a little bit more challenging to cut. But generally speaking, sewing scissors are gonna work pretty well for you. Yeah. And uh, Mish, I see your hand again. Uh, Mitch, did you see any other questions before his? Um, no, I did not. Mitch was the next one I thought. Okay. okay. Great. Uh, yeah, it's just a short question. I have a height and I haven't smoked it yet. I was wondering if um, there are projects I can do with that or if I have to actually definitely smoke it before I can do something with it. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I certainly recommend smoking it. The issue with an unsmoked hide is if it gets wet, it will get hard again. So it's, it's a risk, it's up to you. I mean, certainly there are a lot of, of native tribes in North America who use unsmoked white buckskin for ceremonial purpose. But if it's something that you are going to be wearing or and potentially sweating in or having in areas where it might get damp, then you know, you're know you risking putting effort into something that's gonna end up stiff and, and unyielding on you eventually. So I prefer not to work with unsmoked tides. I have done it a little bit for wedding dresses for people, but it's very nerve wracking because literally like you wash your hands and you have one drop that falls on the hide and then that's a little hard spot in the middle of your hide, so. Yeah. All right. And Megan, I, I know that you wrote me. I don't specifically remember your question, but if you wanted to answer, ask that question here, instead of having me email you back, that's an option too. Yeah, I actually think it got answered. It was around um, preparing hides and things like that. So I, I feel content with this answer here. So you can disregard my email. <laughs> Okay, but I remember that there was a personal connection too. So I particularly like to make sure I answer those ones. Yeah, yeah, with Erin. Oh, Erin Adams, that's right. Okay, yeah, yay. I actually just spoke to her on the phone like Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday. So that's oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Other questions? Uh, Jill? Well, this is not a question actually, but um, in thinking about this, I watched your video and maybe more than one on actually tanning the hides and and you just said this class is not about the tanning, but that was just so overwhelming to see how hard you work <laughs> and how patient you were. And I thought I could never do that. Uh, so, uh, so I, I don't, I don't know where I, I would go from here if I did take this class. Yeah, I, I mean, certainly it's, 
there are ways to make it easier. Um, it's it's definitely there's no getting around the fact that tanning hides is an intense physical process. However, um, as you'll recall, the the man who uh, piped in a lot and who I did a webinar with, Mel, who's one of the contacts, he's 78 and he is still tanning hides, a lot of hides, and he had a whole setup to make it more physically easy for him. And he has he has this special little beam that he sits on and it's got a little spot for his beer. <laughs> And it's like very, very comfortable. And um, so, you know, there are ways, there are workarounds, but it's a lot of effort for sure. And that's an important point for people to know too, because you go to, you know, in a class like this, I'm clear that it's about rain tanned buckskin. There are things that are sold as quote buckskin that are just chrome tanned. And sometimes they're not even deer hide. And that's very different. Um, and it's a lot cheaper. And so sometimes when people hear it, like, it's like, you know, usually two to three hundred dollars us to purchase a whole brain tan deer hide and a lot of people are like oh my god that's so expensive but then you watch the process and you understand how much labor goes into brain tanning and the fact that brain tanning has never been mechanized or industrialized it's a unique leather that comes about because of a tremendous amount of physical labor. Um, and that's why it's so expensive, but that's also why it's so amazing and wonderful to wear and work with. So there's a trade-off. You, you basically like get what you pay for, right? So with buckskin, it's a lot of effort and you get an amazing product or you can buy cheap leather and it's not that compelling a product and it's kind of gross and it's got a lot of heavy metals and it's creating a lot of pollution and destruction in the world. So yeah. Um, I want to just make sure to give space to both Elle and Natalyn, who we haven't heard from, who are um, in the Netherlands, and this is kind of your introductory call to the class. So if you have any, you know, specific concerns, comments, questions, or even just to introduce yourself, this would be a great time for it. Well, I, I had some questions, but they are already answered, so okay. <laughs> that is great. And um, yeah, um, I think um, Mich of Mich, Mitch. I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> you already uh, asked the questions that I wanted to have the answer to. So, um, well, I'm really looking forward and I'm so happy that I see familiar faces uh, from the Netherlands as well. <laughs> and uh, we were also talking about um, making buckskin and Madeleine and I, we were already talking about, okay, we have to do it, make buckskin ourselves. And well, this is also a reason to do that, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, so I uh, I have a little yeah I have a little bit of experience in in sewing, but um, well I guess I can always learn more and I really like the community so. Wonderful. Well, that's what I was going to say is you know one reason to join the class also is just to get connected to all of these other people who are excited about the same things and then you form connections and then like like Mitch was saying you know like the the group meets regularly and there's a core group of people because it's amazing the difference between learning these skills on your own when everyone around you is you know talking about what what show they saw last night or what have you and feeling really isolated in the skills and having the skills make you feel more alone and more weird right versus being part of a community of folks who are all have different levels of experience with it but are all encouraging one another on the journey and it makes a huge difference in both how much you learn because you're hearing all of the different questions and experiences from people and in feeling motivated and inspired so the community piece is really huge and that's why i really encourage folks to try to make it to the zoom calls when they can even if you haven't been watching the classes or you haven't been doing the hands-on and you don't have specific questions yourself, it just takes the learning so much deeper to be in that community field with other people who are doing it. And it might inspire you to actually start, start getting your hands in it. And, and as you say, Elle, working with buckskin might make you realize why it's worth the effort to tan those hides when it's, when it's hard work. Yes. Great, yeah. Well, uh, maybe I have one question because I have a, um, a small piece of buckskin left, <laughs> mm -hmm. but how much do we need for this uh, uh, project? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's, you know, it's uh, several different pieces for the small project. And I send you a pattern and then I give you the scale. So basically you can make it larger or smaller according to how much buckskin you have. The scale that I teach it at is uh, 
is at the top of the pattern. It's four inches across the top of the small pouch. And that is what I have seen is a size that most people can finish within a little more than a day, you know, within a reasonable amount of time. Um, so that's kind of my suggestion, but you can make that a huge briefcase size thing or a teensy little neck pouch using that same pattern and proportions. So it's, you can tailor it how much height you have, but if you do it to the size that I give you, it's around one square foot of hide, you know, roughly, um, and then extra for the for the thong and the welt and those people, particularly the thong, it's nice to not have just a small piece. You know, if you have scraps, then using long pieces along the edge, but, but there'll be a whole class on cutting thong that will help you understand what to look for, for pieces for that. Okay, thank you. Yes, my pleasure. Yeah, and I don't really have a question. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I have um, taken some classes with Baker um, in the Netherlands, and that's where I met uh, Ella. And I'm currently taking bushcraft classes, and um, I have two hides in my freezer for the first time in my life ever. I'm a pure vegetarian. I haven't had meat in 30 years. So now to tell my friends I have hides in the freezer, they go like, she's nuts. But uh, it, when it's springtime, because we're, we're heading towards a minus 10 degree winter spell, which is cold for us. Uh, so when it's uh, getting a bit warmer, then I'm planning to tan them myself. Uh, I've been through the tanning process twice now. I should know, but doing it on your own instead of with an instructor is slightly different. And um, so I'll see if I can cut, because I was looking to buy a hide rather than use the, the ones I've already tanned, because I may want to make a bigger piece, like a garment piece. Uh, but if I can use the edges and, and fit something together and maybe make a smaller version, but learn, um, so I'll be fine. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Wonderful. And it's fun that Ella's in it, because it means that if we want to exchange, it's easier in our, in our uh, time zone. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. would be, there could be a small group within our group of the people in a similar time zone. Yeah. So and if Mish decides, I don't know if he's already signed up, but if he decides to sign up as well, you know, he mentioned Bake and Renee as well. So we, we might team up that way. So that yeah. would be, yeah. 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 And this yeah. is great because, you know, Ella and I have, have interacted online quite a bit and, and is it Beke? Say Beke, it again. Yeah. Beke. So she and I have interacted a lot and I just, I've been pronouncing it Becky and we've been you know, interacting for a while now. We were going to teach a class last year, and so, but I've never heard how. You know, I've never actually heard it out loud and known how to pronounce it. So, very helpful. There <laughs> but you I go. love yeah. how the skills connect people across the. You know, I've never even been to Europe, yeah, but I have all these relationships know, with people there. You probably know Teresa as well. I do know Teresa. I've known Teresa for over twenty years, and she's helping me with the with the scientific and archaeological basis for my buckskin sewing book so she's yeah. she's been editing my first few chapters for me and giving me feedback so and I'm my first planning course with was was with Teresa that makes sense yeah yeah Perfect. I also did yeah. a course with Teresa about fur tanning so it's yeah. a small world world right. I guess <laughs> yeah and I don't think that Teresa sells buckskins herself but I'm just going to go ahead and put in the chat um these women that I know who I believe are in Wales um they're oak and smoke tannery and it's ah. Essie and Jane. And I believe that they sell buckskin and they also teach workshops. And I- um, I, um, Yeah, I purchased a scraper from them. Oh, great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I don't have a link, but they're on Instagram, I know. Um, and I'm sure that if you search them, you can find them. I think it's Jesse Watson and I don't know Jane's last name, but I met them when they were in the US studying with a woman, Lynx Vilden, um, about five, five or more years ago. Um, and they were just learning this stuff then, so it's been it's been exciting watching um, watching their progress, and now they're teaching and selling tools. It sounds like so that's great. Um, I guess um, I'll just say that that's. In, yeah. Can I ask one more question? Of course. Um, I know it's, it's it's different, but maybe is there um, because about fur and uh, sewing with uh, sewing with fur is it is there uh, similarity in it or? That's a great question. They're actually quite different. Um, and this class is not, is not geared towards fur. It's definitely geared towards buckskin. Um, I sew with needle and thread with fur because buckskin is so grippy and the holes are so big. So furs are usually, depending on the fur, but most furs are more delicate 
Then deer skin, deer skin is incredibly strong and a lot of furs are delicate. There's exceptions, beaver is very strong and so is raccoon and there, you know, there are other strong furs. But the thing with the buckskin is it, it takes bigger holes and then it's so grippy that it tends to try to pull all of the fur through the hole and it's yeah. really <laughs> hard to work and it's just a mess. So, so needle and thread is definitely the way to go with fur. And I have, um, I have a chapter about fur, working with fur in my buckskin book. It'll be in the second volume as I divide them, um, but uh, with some, some tips and tricks for making working with furs easier. Cause that's the real trick is not letting that hair come through all of the holes and getting just into a tangled mess, yeah. which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yes. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, great question. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you, Madeline. There's a, there's a link in the chat to the open smoke tannery. Um, so yeah, and I and I haven't seen their hides. You know, like I said, when I met them, they were just learning all of this stuff. So I can't vouch for the quality, but um, but I know they've been doing it for at least five years, and and they have made some beautiful buckskin clothes. And they work with my awls. Uh, Jesse just bought an awl for me a few months ago. Um, when I was, I used to sell these my tools to the public more. And these days, with online classes, I've been so busy that now I sell them just when I'm doing classes or to my Patreon members. So um, also the buckskin book that we're referring to, it's not available to the general public. I'm not planning to make it available in this class because I, I keep that as an exclusive benefit for my Patreon members. Patreon is a crowdfunding um, membership platform basically. So like for anywhere from $3 and up, you can be a member of the Buckskin Revolution team and Mitch is one. Um, and so those tools I make available to them. And then also they can order my book. Certain membership tiers, the book comes automatically, but even at the lower tiers, you have the option to order it. So if you really get hooked on buckskin sewing and you want the information in my book sooner than my book actually gets to print, that is an option too to be aware of. And I think and Brosnan also um, has the book and has and has used it a lot. I know, um, and and we just got to see amazing pictures of pants that she made um, in the in the Revolution Circle group that I was talking about. So yeah, so much excitement <laughs> to share with this class. So yeah, well, it's getting no, close to the hour. Go ahead, Mitch. Yeah. Uh, that's all I was going to say. What you just said. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I saw, I saw Hello. one hand up, Noah. Bye, bye. bye. Oh, hi, thank you. Yeah, Thanks any last, very much. Any, see, any see you at the class. for me? Great, well, thank you so much, everyone. And um, I will be sending, and there's a little plug for the book. Thanks, Brosnan. Um, so yeah, so the class starts in two days. I will be sending you an email with a link to this video um, and the chat. And again, that code to get the coupon is FEB, F-E-B 15. And you would just go to register for the course. And then when it asks for your payment, it'll have a little prompt saying, do you have a code? And you just write that in and then it'll automatically take that off of your registration. Um, so yeah, looking forward to seeing many of you, who knows, maybe all of you in the course soon. Great. Bye everyone. Hi. Hi.